It's 6 p.m. on a Friday here in Korea. Coming to you live from our studio in Seoul, I'm Daniel Che for Arirang News. Let's start with the headlines. While major economies around the world follow the global trend towards monetary easing, Korea's central bank decides to keep its key rate steady for another month. After Wednesday's deadly reservist shooting incident, the defense ministry is considering measures, including a stop to all live firing drills to prevent a similar tragedy from happening again. Today, May 15th, is Teacher's Day in Korea. Traditionally, students respect and honor their educators, but that may be changing as Korean education gets more cutthroat. Let's start with our first story. Korea's central bank has decided to keep its key rate steady for May, taking a wait-and-see approach. But market watchers say a rate cut could be in the cards next month. Our Shin Se-min starts us off. It did not come as a surprise. The Bank of Korea kept its key rate at 1.75 percent for the second month in a row, following its monthly monetary policy meeting on Friday. The central bank governor, EGR, said the freeze is meant to assess the effect of the previous rate cut in March, the third quarter of a percentage point cutback since August of last year. The real estate market has been on a recovery track recently, and consumer sentiment is also improving, but we need to keep an eye on whether these trends will continue. He added that the central bank is also closely monitoring the global financial market's increased volatility and the country's mounting household debt. The amount of debt saw a sharp increase after the previous rate cuts that left the key rate at a historic low, while home transactions also shot up. But saying that it's still unclear whether the effects of the rate cuts have been reflected on the real economy, experts add that more should be done. With the economic structure, the improved property market is hardly seen as a sign that the economy is improving, because it also means that many people have taken out loans to buy houses. Another rate cut is possible, with the central banker hinting that a reduction will depend on second quarter business data. Experts say that it is likely since the current rate is not enough to rouse the economy. Shin Se-min, Arirang News. And in the wake of Wednesday's shooting spree during a military training session for reservists, officials have decided to temporarily halt all live fire exercises at the accident site. Some are even calling to extend that measure to all training facilities. Our Na Young helps us take a closer look at the developments. South Korea's defense ministry has for now stopped all live fire exercises at the training facility in Negokdong, southern Seoul, where reservists with a history of mental illness surnamed Che shot dead two of his fellow soldiers before turning the rifle on himself on Wednesday. While this may calm the waters momentarily, lawmakers are calling for more concrete action. It's truly appalling that the controllers and instructors were busy trying to run away. We don't need this kind of military. The training for reservists should be suspended altogether until a fundamental countermeasure is found. The defense ministry will launch a task force to address the issue on Saturday. The group will revise safety regulations and come up with measures for preventing similar incidents in the future. A few of the topics for discussion include the placement of bulletproof partitions between shooting lanes, the installation of surveillance cameras at every shooting range, and the creation of a system for sharing the reservists' military service files and medical records with the training facilities. But some are skeptical, saying that implementing these measures will be easier said than done, especially with the last revision because it will infringe on the reservists' privacy. All Korean men must complete nearly two years of military service and stay on in the reserves for eight years, during which time they attend regular training sessions to maintain their skills. Na Hyun-kyung, Arirang News. Moving on, Korea's National Assembly remains in deadlock over a controversial bill aimed at reforming the country's budget-draining pension system for civil servants. With just three economy-related bills passed this week, the ruling Henry Party suggested holding a three-way meeting on Sunday with the main opposition New Politics Alliance for Democracy and President Park Geun-hye at the presidential office of Cheong Wa-de. The ruling party says the meeting could help the two parties reach a compromise over the pension bill and get the National Assembly working again. The presidential office, however, has asked that the meeting be pushed back.
The ruling party wants the pension reform bill passed first, while the NPAD wants to discuss reforms to the basic pension for elderly citizens and a corporate tax rise. Staying in the political arena, discord is growing within the main opposition New Politics Alliance for Democracy as the party tries to recover from a startling defeat in April's by-election. The NPAD's chief, Bun Jae-in, and most of the pro No Mu-hyun group have faced heavy criticism for those losses. The pro Nos are a group of NPAD lawmakers who began their political careers during the administration of the late former president, No Mu-hyun. They're now taking heat from the party's other factions who say they dominated key posts and excluded other members. Just this week, Supreme Council members squabble frequently during daily meetings, resulting in petitions to the party's ethics committee. Senior policymakers plan to unveil a roadmap to reform and unify the NPAD and develop policy alternatives to counter the ruling Senri party. Today is Teacher's Day here in Korea when Koreans thank their current and former teachers for their guidance and counseling. President Park Geun-hye, who also had a chance to meet and thank her own teachers earlier today, used the opportunity to highlight the impact teachers can have on Korea's future. Our Choi Yoo-sun reports. Referring to North Korea's recent provocations and reports of instability inside the reclusive regime, President Park Geun-hye highlighted educators' role in building a strong and resilient South Korean society capable of standing its ground. 안팎에서 우리 사회를 혼란에 빠뜨리려는 시도가 있을 수 있는데 자유민주주의에 대한 확고한 신념과 애국심이 뒷받침될 수 있도록 하는데 교육 현장의 선생님들께서 중심이 되어 주시기를 부탁드립니다. The president also asked teachers to encourage students to reach their potential through their passion and creativity, not through competition or grades. 정부는 자유 학기제를 전면적으로 도입하고 학생들이 다양한 체험 활동을 함으로써 스스로 자기의 재능과 끼를 찾아 도전할 수 있는 기회를 제공할 것입니다. Crediting the instructors from her youth for teaching her to lead a life based on her beliefs and principles, President Park took the opportunity to thank two of her middle and high school teachers, both now in their 70s. One of them brought a picture of the president in costume after her performance in the Shakespearean play The Merchant of Venice 50 years ago. The president shares stories of foreign leaders wishing to learn from Korea's educational system, which played a significant role in the country's rapid development, and asked her former teachers to guide efforts to foster innovative young talent for a better tomorrow. Choi yoo Arirang News. The month of May is a special month for Korea. We have many days to celebrate important members of, of our society, including uh, Children's Day, Parents' Day, and today is, of course, time to appreciate the important role teachers play in young lives. But according to our Connie Kim, there's growing evidence that educators who were once very respected in Korean society are losing their revered status. This chalkboard message reads, Thank you, teacher. The students in this class are following the tradition of pinning a carnation on their teacher's shirt and writing letters of appreciation. I loved my teacher the first time I met her. She would answer all my questions kindly, even when she was busy. In the past, many students thought of their teachers as second parents, who offered life lessons and advice, as well as academic knowledge. Korea has been celebrating this special day for more than 50 years. But as time goes by, respect for teachers seems to be falling. In a recent survey, 83 percent of respondents said they believe that teachers are not well respected. In the past, it was common for adults to stay in touch with teachers, especially on Teacher's Day. But 78 percent say they haven't phoned or visited any of their former educators in the past year. Experts say this data reflects an educational shift from a teacher-centered classroom to an overwhelming focus on competition and getting good grades. In the past, there were more than instructors. They taught life lessons to students. But with academic competition getting fiercer, teachers are viewed as people who just exist to give information. Yang says schools are a microcosm of society, and teachers should play a major role in giving students direction in life. To do that, educators need an environment where expertise is acknowledged and respected.
Connie Kim, Arirang News. Shifting gears now, the government has approved a plan by some 40 international female activists to cross the DMZ into South Korea from the north next week. The planned march was organized by prominent female activists calling for an end to the Korean War. Hwang Sung-hee has this report. South Korea will allow a group of international female activists to enter the country by crossing the heavily fortified demilitarized zone from North Korea. Seoul's Unification Ministry said Friday that the Women Cross DMZ group will be granted government approval to cross the DMZ on May 24th, but will be encouraged to do so through the inter-Korean Kaesong Industrial Zone border post. Around 40 female activists from around the world plan to embark on a peace march calling for an end to the Korean War. They'll start in Pyongyang and cross the DMZ into South Korea. The Koreas are technically still at war after the Korean War ended in a truce, not a peace treaty. North Korea gave its approval earlier this month. The group had initially planned to cross the DMZ through the truce village of Panmunjom, but a South Korean official said that's not possible due to safety concerns. The UN command at the DMZ was also reportedly against the idea of the civilian crossing. The upcoming plan is led by prominent American activist Gloria Steinem, with the support of Nobel laureates that helped end violence in Northern Ireland and Liberia. While the march has been in the international spotlight, some critics say a group of foreigners walking across the DMZ will do little in bringing about change in North Korea. Hwang sung Arirang News. And staying with North Korea, there are growing questions about whether the country's defense chief, Hyun young chul has actually been executed as images of him keep appearing and disappearing from local media outlets there. Our Han Dalen has more. Kim Jong-un's recent visit to a local fish farm has raised questions about the authenticity of reports that he had his defense chief executed late last month. The report in North Korea's state newspaper said he was accompanied by a group of key figures, including the general political director of the Korean People's Army and the military's highest ranking official, Hwang byung ha and the director of the United Front Department of the Korean Workers' Party, Kim yang Gon. Defense Chief Hyun young chai was not present, but he has appeared on local TV even after April 30th, the day he is reported to have been shot dead in public. The footage has most likely been pre-recorded, but pundits say it is very rare for North Korea to show images of purged officials in the media after their executions. There were no images of Kim Jong-un's uncle Chang song Tek, for instance, on state TV in the days before he was executed. Meanwhile, South Korean government sources say of the 70 North Korean officials purged since Kim Jong-un took power, 60 of them were members of the Workers' Party. Seoul officials presume this is because party members have a much stronger voice in financial affairs than other high-profile officials. Hyun, the latest official allegedly executed, also reportedly clashed with Kim Jong-un over financial issues. And then, Arirang News. Back here in South Korea, the Navy and Coast Guard wrapped up their two-day defense drill around the country's easternmost Tokdo Island. The drill involved 10 vessels, including Navy destroyers, the P-3 maritime patrol aircraft, and fighter jets. The Korean, Mar Korean Marine Corps rather, and Navy SEALs did not participate due to inclement weather. The biannual drill, first conducted in 1986, trains military personnel in the search, blocking, and removal of non-military forces from Tokdo Island. It's the country's first drill in the area since the U.S. and Japan revised their defense cooperation pact last month. Observers in Korea say that under the new guidelines, the U.S. would support Japan in a military conflict between Korea and Japan over the island. Samsung Group has announced that Lee Jae-yong, the heir apparent to Korea's largest conglomerate, will take over two of the company's charitable foundations. The 46-year-old will succeed his father Lee Gun-hee as the new chairman of Samsung Life Public Welfare Foundation and Samsung Foundation of Culture starting May 30th. The appointments mark and for the first time Lee Jae-yong has assumed the chairman title within the conglomerate. The move comes as senior E, the chairman of Samsung Group, is still in hospital more than a year after a heart attack. Since then, his son has taken on a greater role in running the company. 
Industry experts believe this recent transfer of power suggests a full and formal succession is just a matter of time. The first hearing in the multi-billion dollar lawsuit filed by U.S. private equity firm Lone Star Funds against the Korean government starts in Washington this Friday. Lone Star is demanding nearly 4.7 billion U.S. dollars for lost profits and tax disputes, saying Seoul's delayed approval forced the company to forego a more lucrative sales of its stakes in the Korea Exchange Bank. Seoul claims that the approval couldn't be rushed because at the time Lone Star was facing allegations of manipulating KEB stock prices. The World Bank's International Center for Settlement of Investment Disputes will hear the case, the first of its kind in Korea. That's all we have time for at this hour, but we do have more coming up at 10 p.m. Korea time on Primetime News, so do join us then. For now, thank you for watching.